So uh, hi everybody and welcome to You've Got Mel. Um, today it's just me here in the studio, but I have a lot of things to tell you. Um, it's kind of funny you've got Mel with uh, with just me. Should we do the jingle? Yeah, people love the jingle. Let's do the jingle. It'll give me some something to talk about. I have lots to talk about. Are you ready for the jingle? Here we go. Let's have a jingle. Get a chair, grab a seat, or we'll sweep you off your feet. We move, we groove, you got Mel. Ease your legs, rest a while, all you gotta do is smile. We're swell, can't you tell you got Mel? When the show begins, you better hold on real tight. Or before you know it, you'll be high as a kite. Take a break, settle down, we're the only show in town. That's our road, don't you know you got Mel? Give it up, don't think twice, we're a hurricane on ice. What the hell, give a yell, ring your bell, show and tell. Mademoiselle, give a smell, you got Mel. You've got Mel. And today on You've Got Mel, we have me. So, uh, hi everybody. Um, you can see me, I'm not sure where, uh, but uh, for sure, um, I'm getting messages here, so uh, you're welcome to uh, post me, ask me questions. And uh, what I thought I would uh, do today is to recap and uh, say thank you to a lot of people. Uh, we've had over 80 guests on You've Got Mel in 2020. It started out as a corona thing. Um, I uh, used to have a radio show called You've Got Mel uh, at IDC many years ago, and we made the jingle. And then for 10 years, nothing happened. And then when the virus hit, it was time to take the genie out of the bottle and uh, start it again with a new format. But we had the old jingle. And of course, uh, the youngsters won't get the uh, joke, you know, and you've got Mel, but there's enough uh, of us around to appreciate it. And um, I am going to continue. You've got Mel in 2021. It's part of the things that I want to do this year. Uh, so um, I'm going to be interviewing people that I love, people that I've never met before from all kinds of different disciplines and lack of discipline. Uh, and if you want to be on the show or you know anybody who you think should be on the show uh, who speaks English and is exciting and inspiring, then I definitely want to interview that person. So just let me know. Um, You've Got Mel is just one of the things that I've done over the past uh, nine months. Like many of you, um, I never anticipated uh, what was waiting around the corner. End of February, I flew off with my friends Alona Meet and Chagai Cohen to a wonderful uh, Kinernet and unconference in Finland uh, where we met the 90 other crazy people and spent the weekend doing all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, and then we came back to this crazy new world. I want to say brave new world. Uh, the world has become, in fact, so Michigane that um, fake news aside, the real world looks as if somebody just went and invented it. Um, how, can, how can this be? Uh, all the things that have happened over the past nine months. Um, and uh, I think that a couple of things have conspired over the past couple of days to make me want to reach out and say thank you. Thank you uh, to everyone who's been part of my life uh, over the past year. Uh, thank you for the people who have put up with me. Uh, thank you to my students. Uh, and I'm going to mention a couple of, of people who have helped me uh, see the light over the past couple of days. So first of all, um, after getting back from Finland and being a microbiologist and, and, and realizing uh, how dangerous this uh, pandemic was, um, I really locked down um, together with my wonderful wife who put up with me all these months. Shuli, thank you. Toda. Um, we have practically been in isolation. The kids come over, the grandkids, and sit in the backyard. 
Uh, and sometimes we forget ourselves and give them a hug and run to wash our hands with, with gel and uh, everything else. But uh, generally speaking, we have been avoiding people. And people are what I love most. Uh, I will go to Brazil uh, to meet the people and not to go see the waterfall at Iguaçao. Because for me, it's always been about humanity, which is really the most exciting thing on planet Earth. Um, and I hope will continue to be for many years to come. Um, so what happened? Uh, the world went the world went crazy. And uh, hi, Gary. Um, I'm trying to follow what people are saying. If they're saying anything, I'm having trouble because I'm such a spaz. Um, so um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to deal with this. I don't see myself on the screen. Can somebody uh, let me know that I am being watched now or just talking to myself? Anyway, uh, getting back to the crazy world. Um, within a, a week or two, uh, my class on uh, popular music, this class I love, this crazy Michigan academic class at Tel Aviv University with over a hundred um, with over a hundred uh, people, all of a sudden, um, um, oh, good. So I am uh, on. It's a Tel Aviv University. Okay, great. A hundred. Um, I'm going to have to get out of here. People, all of a sudden, um, oh, good. Okay, so I've just seen myself, so I, I do exist. Um, so this course I'm giving with over 100 students, 60s music. And we have a band and we play the piano and we sing and we dance. And then after class, we go to the bar and have a beer and talk about the great music of the 60s. Disappeared and became a Zoom course. And uh, even though I was using Zoom, I never thought that I would be living in a Zoom world. Um, so before you know it, we had to become experts on Zoom. And here's the thing about Zoom. The thing about Zoom is it's not real it's not the real thing. But hey, you know, uh, I'm connecting with more people than ever before. Uh, my siblings, uh, we speak once a week together. We never did that before. There's four of us, two in Canada, two in Israel. We're now talking every Shabbos. We have our family and we get together on WhatsApp or Zoom and we talk. And then the, the challenge became being a human being on Zoom. And the thing is that it, is possible because you know we talk about uh, the difficulty of teaching on zoom but zoom is just like watching television isn't it and sometimes you're on the television what could be more exciting than that uh so i think that the problem that we've encountered in schools all over the world is that to be really a, an effective teacher on zoom you have to be a performer you have to be a, a theater person and we're not training our teachers to be theater people but we should be, because in this day and age, and this goes from, from grade one all the way to the end of the university, um, it's not teaching what anymore, is it? It's teaching why and how. And for that, you need to be a mentor. And you can be a mentor on Zoom. Uh, this, the what you can teach offline, the what you can send people in documents. But being a mentor, you can do on Zoom. So I was thrown into this impossible situation of, of my course, the 60s course, uh, with over um, 200 students online. Everything happened, it crashed and, and you know we couldn't sing together, but somehow it turned into a very nice course. And then the other course I had on success in the digital world for my students at Shankar College turned into a, real life, actual course, and how are we going to get life? And the students invented themselves during the course, which is what they were supposed to do. And they became writers and, 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 and the theater directors and, and, and changed their whole outlook on life. So I said that I should, and at, at the beginning I did. I, I started learning Greek and I started doing exercise and um, I started doing You've Got Mail. But then two difficult things happened to me. 
uh, one at Shankar College and one at Ben Gurion University. I'm not going to go into them, but but senior people that I believed in let me down, and um, and uh, I thought I had a job, and then at the end of the day, I didn't. Um, but I felt sorry for myself and resentful towards the academia and towards friendship in general. And maybe I shouldn't have, because the people who are running these colleges and universities have a lot to deal with this year. And uh, I'm just a small little screw in their machinery and easy to manipulate. So here we are, looking back towards what was in 2020. About seven years ago, I wrote to Judy Collins, a famous singer from the 1960s and 70s, and asked her to give some words of wisdom to my 60s class. Jeff Pulver, my dear buddy, helped connect us. And actually, Judy Collins wrote to me. And she said to me, Mel, tell your class, look back, but don't stare. Wow, what words of wisdom. So, you know, a couple of uh, days ago, it was the end of the year, and I saw all my buddies on Facebook writing uh, and summing up the year. And uh, even though I must say that we're okay, uh, we're, we're alive, we're healthy. Um, I lost friends this year. Uh, many of my uh, acquaintances had terrible situation. And, God forbid that they will in the coming months, but who knows what a crazy world this is. But I felt sorry for myself. I lost two jobs. Maybe I never had them. I was angry with academia. I was angry with academia because they don't really care about the quality of teaching. They excel in one thing, and this is colleges and to some extent universities. They excel in mediocrity. They don't care if the teachers are mediocre. And unfortunately, the students, at least the students in Israel, college and university students, are complicit. They're accomplices to this. You know, uh, don't give us too much homework. Don't inspire us. We're here to get a degree, not really to learn. Tell us what we need to know for the exam. Not tell us what to learn to change our lives to enable us to survive and thrive in the future. What is going to be on the exam? So we have a culture in academia of excelling at mediocrity. And I fought this all my life at the teaching level. But you know what? Maybe it's time just to say, you know, it is what it is. Universities and colleges are not going to change. In fact, they're going to get worse because one of the things we've learned this year is that we don't need them. The same stuff that most teachers are teaching online, you can study better somewhere else. So if university professors are not going to become mentors and, 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 and people who try and inspire students and get them excited about their own exploration, we're doomed. So maybe, you know, it's time, new year, new decade, to stop dwelling on the future of academia and start giving. What do I mean by that? Well, we have a culture in Israel and probably elsewhere in the world. Uh, in, in Hebrew, we call it loliot frayer, not to be a sucker. If you're not getting paid for something, you're a sucker. If people are making more money than you, you're a sucker. And a lot of good things have happened to me over the past couple of years that didn't involve money. One of them was the three TED Ed videos that have, I produced or I wrote that have been seen by 7 million people. So I should be proud of that, but I'm not proud of it because I didn't make any money. Our books, 155,000 books in 30 different languages written by 90,000 people around the world. I should be proud of that, together with my dear wife and my wonderful co-founder, Ron Sternin. I'm not proud of it because we're not making any money. 
We don't have a good business model. Well, maybe it's time to wake up. Maybe the world has too many business models. Maybe we should stop thinking about success in terms of coinage. Maybe there should be another kind of coin. I don't know what that coin is. It won't be the Bitcoin, but it'll be a kind of another kind of coin. Because when I wrote on Facebook last week about the year that I had, I didn't expect to get 170 comments. And I haven't even managed to answer all of them, but I just thank everybody who, who wrote to me. It was so inspiring. And uh, Shiri Schiffer wrote me something that really had a big effect on me. She said, looks like you've had a juicy year. And up until that, I looked at my year as a kind of a, of a failure. I'm unemployed. I don't have an employer. But, you know, maybe I'm my own employer. I work at You've Got Mel. I don't make a salary, but I receive, I'm recompensated or whatever that word is, in a different kind of currency. Not the monetary kind of currency. I have enough money right now. I had a wonderful career. I have a pension. I have enough money to buy food. I'm not poor. Why, why am I so worried about not being a friar? About not being paid for our books or for You've Got Mail or for the eight stories that I donated to the Minister of Education last year. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with society that we define everything in terms of money? So if there's one wake up message, it is that the trick in 2021 is to be juicy. So thank you, Shiri. I plan to be even juicier in 2021 than I was in 2020. The other thing is, you know, you learn a lot from your students, and I'm also learning a lot from my interviewees on You've Got Mail. I'll just mention one of them, Julie Headland, uh, who's a, a star writer and, and teacher of uh, children book writers. And uh, during our conversation, she had the notion that we often think of ourselves as being here. You know, there's another there. Um, I've written, but I don't have an agent. I have an agent, but I don't have a publisher. I have a publisher, but not enough people are buying my book. And um, according to Julie, the trick is not to be in the here, but to be in the there. In other words, we can always say I'm here and I'm not there. That there is where I'd like, to, I'd like to have a better job. I'd like to have a better income. I'd like to have a better car. But for the same token, whatever that token is, and it's not money, we can be in the there. I'm there. Okay, there's some place else that I'd love to go. It would be a great journey. But I'm already there. I've done so many things. I've been to so many places. I'm there. And I have to tell you a story that I remember, and this is many, many years ago, at least three decades. My uh, friend uh, and uh, co-inventor, Erwin uh, Weiss, um, when his son, Etam, was two years old, uh, Erwin uh, shouted to him, Etam, where are you? And Etam, the two-year-old, answered, Daddy, I'm there. Abba, Anisham. And this is something that's so brilliant, you know, only a two-year-old can say, I'm there. The rest of us live in the here. So, what I plan to do in 2021 is to be juicy and to work together with people who um, have the ability to be juicy and not to look at the bottom line. I'll give you another example. My dear new friend, Atara Ofek. Um, she is now going to come out with a magazine at the end of January, in Hebrew, a children's magazine called Agudal, 
which is thumbs or thumb, it's going to be a free online magazine for kids. She's not going to get paid because there's no way we're going to have money. And we're not going to have advertisement, at least at the beginning. Why is Atara doing this? Because it's juicy. It's a dream come true, you know, to be editor in chief of a, of a children's magazine. She's a very, very uh, recognized editor of children's books in Israel. And, and I have to take example from these kind of people. I need more of Ataras in my life and less of the people that are asking me, what's the business model? How are you going to make money? I think that this coinage of comparing ourselves by how much money we make is very, very damaging, especially in this particular era, when so many people are losing jobs. And you know, when you lose jobs, you lose self-worth. I was fired from Shankar. It was like a kick in the stomach. When I think about it, I can't breathe. Um, and I think that that's the wrong attitude. While we look for employment, we have to find ways to be juicy. So um, I'm going to thank you, to thank my students, to thank my wonderful friends on Facebook who came through for me last week and made me understand that it's not about the money and it's not about the um, position. It's all about being juicy. So Shiri, thank you very much. And um, I would like to answer a few questions if anybody has any questions for me, but I'm not sure how I can go about doing that because I don't see me while I'm broadcasting. So I don't know how to do that. Um, oh, I have 12 comments here. Maybe I can figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Gary Scheinberg. Mel, this is similar to what I've been saying for years. You can be rich, but without money. You can be rich with help, support, wisdom, and empathy, never using cash. And uh, Yossi Tates, it sounds like you want to start a community, and Jeff is sending me hugs. Well, this is the thing, you know, I, I never really wanted to start a community, but um, I think that I have a community. It just kind of happened. It's a fluid community because it's students like Yifat, whom I met this morning, who I taught a couple of years ago, um, and the, the students in my popular music course, 200. Um, the community is also includes my teaching assistant, Nitsan Cohen, who did marvelous things with the course. Maybe she gets paid 10 shekel an hour by Tel Aviv University. I don't know. So uh, these are the people that I want to be associated with in 2021. The juicy people, the Marty Herskovitz of the world, the people who are giving and not expecting anything in return except maybe the coin of juiciness. So Jeff Pulver, if there is a coin for juicy, I think that this is what uh, we need to do. Shiri Schiffer, you're gonna have to get the first coin because it was your idea. So um, I think that my plan for 2021 is to be juicier. Um, so I think that, uh, thank you, Tom is on the, uh, line here what a wonderful guy and um i think that tom we all have this this issue with ourselves you know um self-worth how do you how do you create a bank of self-worth how much money has to be in that bank for you to have self-estimation it was always a problem for me people who are performers and I'm a performer, are always looking at the audience for approbation to get their coins. And we live in a capitalistic society that failed us this year. You know, when things get difficult, 
Capitalism is an abject failure. And that's when people have to start taking care of each other. Whether it's the guy who walks out onto his porch and plays saxophone, whether it's Richard Lucas who, who keeps trying to set up these TEDx communities all over the place and coffee, Krakow in Tel Aviv and the TED circles. These are the true heroes of my past year. And um, I'm gonna start crying in a minute. Um, it's a really difficult world that we're going into right now. Even with the vaccinations, the virus is not gonna go away for years. And we're gonna to have to find ways to exude humanity. And it may be over Zoom, over this imperfect dialogue. But this is what we are going to have to do as human beings. And in order to survive and thrive, we're going to have to put the money issues aside to the extent that if we have enough to survive on, we're okay. And not to use that as our point of reference for self-worth, as I did for so many years. It's a big mistake. I have to apologize to my sisters for all the conversations we had about that. So I'm blessed with a wonderful family wonderful kids, and a apparently a fluid community of people. And uh, haha, Ellen wrote me, and the Kidlet community. You know, there are communities out there that are splendid. The community of, of children book writers. I belong to a community of 11,000 people run by Elaine and Sylvia for love. And they reach out to writers all over the world. And, and, and the amount of help that they give one another is incredible. It's incredible. And um, I'm going to say goodbye to you in a few minutes uh, because a miracle in my life is happening in half an hour. And that is that I am opening a new course for aspiring children's book writers who I want to start with the ABCs. I'm not good enough to teach them the advanced because I myself have a wonderful mentor, Harold Underdown, who's uh, teaching me all the way from New York how to be a better writer. But I'm really good at teaching people in the first baby steps of how to write for children. And in half an hour, I have seven students. And rather than take the money, I'm going to transfer the money to our books where it will do much better in helping people all over the world publish books for free. So, yes, um, I am optimistic about the coming year. Yes, it's going to be difficult. But yes, the moment we adopt the juiciness formula, we're going to be in a much better position to help each other get through it. Um, Pano. Pano, thank you. Paristopoli, Pano. We must learn to be human again, to humanize technology, and the new credit must be smiles. So I'm going to end this with a huge smile and get ready for my course in children's book writing. So um, the nicest thing you can do for me is to have a look at our books. It's free to tell people about it. Um, to uh, reach out uh, to help me with my juiciness. And uh, please contact me if you think that I can help you with yours. Have a wonderful year, everybody, and thanks so much.